Okay, let's crank this. Let's call this meeting to order. We are uh, we're, we're duly posted. We have a quorum. And uh, we have a couple of visitors. I'd like to say who you are. I'm Jim Weber. Jim Weber. Steve Anderson with the uh, Friends. Welcome, welcome. I uh, will entertain a motion to approve the agenda, not necessarily in this order. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we are announcing the date of the next meeting, January 21st at 6.30. As usual, the minutes from the November 19th meeting. Move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the November 9th meeting. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Citizens' comments. Either you gentlemen want to make any any comments off the cuff or anything? No? Here You're, doing good. <laughs> You're doing good so far. <laughs> Keep it up. Okay. Less than a minute per item. Director's report. Linda. Okay. You're up. Number one, we do not have x rated videos. And yes, I did listen to the October two, 2013 meeting, and I did say we did have x rated videos, and I do apologize. Well, that. here's a question for you then. We don't, but to our no. Patrons have access? Not here, or not from other of the libraries, no. Okay, so what you're saying is that we don't have X-rated videos and no one within the Indian Head Federation right. library system has X-rated videos either? Right. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Well, that's good news. Um, the report from the Indian Head Federate Library System and the Moore Annual Fee about the Moore Annual Fees has been moved to January meeting and Rich O'Connor is present. He would like to be present when we have that discussion. Tom or John Thompson will be coming from Indian Head, so you can have to ask him the questions that he would have. Well, the only question that the only question that I had that did not get answered in that email exchange was whether we are going to. Uh, push off that increase until the board has a chance to analyze. Um, I mean, is that increase just automatically taking effect and we're just ab absorbing that into our budget right now because we're going to be several months removed from when that was voted on? It's not on the agenda right now. I'm not talking about it on the agenda. Oh, Where you're going, exactly. Wait, clar clarify that if you would, please. Well, I'm just saying that topic has been moved to the January 2014 meeting. Uh, that, was not, uh, that was a question. Did we, okay, you have we, answer? well, that's a pretty easy question, though. Have we, are we paying the increased fee right now? Is that's the, all I'm just does, asking. Does the increased fee take effect January 1st? When does that fee take, when does the increase take effect? January 1st. So, so what I'm hearing is that, before the next meeting, we're going to pay the increased fee. That's just what I wanted to know. It will. It will be. There will be beginning to be charged to us. Yes. Right. Okay. And we can challenge them at the January meeting to find out what it's all about. No shaking. <sighs> the Christmas tree display in the lobby was again done by the Hudson Fowler and Garden Group. They are also the ones that have done the landscaping out there and have spent many, many thousands. And I thank the group for their contributions to the library. I gave you a pink copy. Um, the bridge to Gavapia, oops. Um, the pink copy shows a graph on the left hand, oops. Okay, the pink copy shows you, I, I did where I am, um, I decided to just see, well, what were the three top money denominations that we received? And it's on that bottom rectangular graph, line graph, on the bottom on that pink sheet. And you will notice there was like the 25, the $50, and the $100 are the top given denominations given by donors. 
and there were two donors that sent in a donation of $1,000, and one donor sent a donation of $2,000. How many had $2,000? One. One. That was the Will Savage? No, I did not include any oh, Will Savage. Okay. I just did the donation specifically <coughs> for the library. Okay. Um, the Bridge the Gap Fund, right now we raised $23,341, and after expenses it comes down to $18,782. Um, the total of cardholders from January to November show an increase of 5.5% .5 over the 2012 um, cardholders. Linda, can I back you up real quick? And just on the net of $18,782, do you, do you recall what last year was? Net. If you don't, that's fine. I'm just wondering. It was, it was about twenty thousand dollars. It was a slightly more than this. Okay. The average visitor count for November is four hundred and seventy, with the library open for twenty days in November. And I know a lot of it was mentioned last time that the visitor count. Uh, we have a lot higher visitor count, even though our circulation is down. But just like tonight now, we have a Boy Scout troop in one of the meeting rooms. So you're getting a lot of bodies coming in. And they're not necessarily going to check out material, but they will have their meeting here. So the library is getting used heavily for meetings by groups. The total circulation up to now is 273,000. Um, there is a white sheet I gave you today. the table over there. It had a graph on it. It looks like that one that you have right there. Yep. The graph and the numbers on the right hand side were wrong in my document that I put out to the internet and I have made corrections there for you on the right hand side. It's that there one with the tan, blue and white colors. And this is the side that was wrong. It didn't match here. I did percentage on one side and I did the circulation by numbers on the other side. Um, okay, this month I sent Matthew, Joan, and I for a continuing education workshop sponsored by Indian Head and Owen. Matthew and I attended workshops on Freedale and Freeding, which are services that will be available to patrons starting January 2nd. Freedale is a database of music where individuals will be able to download three songs a week. Freeding is a, another ebook database where patrons will be able to download um, titles onto their mobile or digital you know, devices. Uh, I'm hoping that by the January 2nd, Matthew will have trained all the library assistants on this, uh, on how to download. So when individuals come in, and I'm sure we're going to have a flood of people coming in, especially the elderly that help them get a, a Kindle, an iPad, or another digital device that they want to download. Titles. Okay. Joan Wishman, I sent to Claire, and she learned about database cleanup. When uh, at the end of the year, a lot of times we'll have, we might have records out there without a call number, uh, missing a description or subject headings, and we need to clean that up. If, there's always going to be some cleanup at the end of the year. And then I gave you a blue slip of paper, and this is just an FYI. Today I received. The addendum to the joint agreement with all signatures. And I'm just giving it to you. And I will be out of the office December 19th through the 26th. Any questions? So this is just confirmation that all the parties yes. have, have And I didn't know if you wanted to put it with your regular joint agreement. Yep. Yeah, good. Okay. 
Anything else? Any other questions? Questions or comments for the director's report? Are we going to discuss the performance evaluation at another point on the agenda? Or will we do it here? It's under mine. I know it's under there. That's why, we're, that's why I was asking the question. What's the number of that? That was Dan. Were you in part of that? I was last year. Yeah, I know you were. I thought you were last year. Yeah, Dan and, and I did it last yeah. year. But at this point, I, I uh, brought the topic forward at our last meeting, asking that it be on the agenda, just to make sure it didn't get overlooked, sure. because that's a, a normal uh, work. We were behind schedule last year, and we're <laughs> behind schedule again. So. Um, so I guess what, I guess, yeah, would you and Dan consider doing it again and granted Dan is not here, no, um, or what is the protocol here, and yes, we have to do a performance review for her, yes. That's right. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we all have the opportunity for input at that point right, as well. Right, we, yeah. saw, we saw it input from everyone um, based um, against the the job description and the goals that we, um, Linda, um, put forward at the beginning of the year. So it was we addressed her performance against job description and against the goals. Um, I I believe it actually says that it's the, the, the I think our bylaws suggested this. The president has a role in this. Um, so, I mean, I certainly am willing to, to work on it. I don't know if I should be taking the lead now that I'm not an officer. I certainly am willing to work on it. So, I mean, if, if the sense of the board is that we follow the process we did last year, which was to seek input from everyone and to use those two criteria, I mean, those two um, Set of attributes or criteria. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for Dan. Yeah, no, obviously no. But I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a good, good protocol or good, good method of doing that. We can get the, we can uh, get the list that she put out at the beginning of the year, and then you could solicit input, you know, mail it out to us, right, right, each right. of us for, for input, and give us a time frame to, to respond. Right. I think that would be good, and hopefully Dan would. Would be willing that he's been he's been pretty good in the past. I think he did it a couple of years before right, right. before last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so. That's an area of his. And it, as the, I believe he's currently chairing the the personnel committee, right? So that in a sense, this is under the auspices mm -hmm. of personnel. Right. So. Right. I have a question on that. The policy and personnel committee has not met since we reformed with new members. So there has not been any progress forward on my goals for this year. So how is that going to be taken into consideration? Well, I think you've, you've raised a good point and um, it, it should, that should be considered in evaluating the goals that you established. That you, need, you, need, you need the board's um, help with some of that and um, if, if we didn't deliver then <laughs> we can't hold you accountable yeah. <laughs> for our lack of delivery. So. I know Dan tried to schedule one meeting but um, that wasn't even part of that particular agenda at the time. So. You want I'm, a, I'm supposing that he needs to pick a day. I haven't heard from Dan as far as right. to get him put in a meeting. Right. Who, I do who's know. on that? I had Allie. Marion and I and Dan. Okay. Well, don't and don't jump and say me too fast. I, I never got included. You didn't? I thought you were on the. Uh, uh, nothing reflects that I am, but I'd be happy to. Don't we have policy and personnel? I thought you were we did also the, part of We that. did all of those. Yeah. At the, I'm not Thank sure. What yeah, well, I, I looked at the minutes. It's not on there. So, like I said, I'd be willing to. Um, well, that's good. And before we get off the subject, is this yours as well? No. Yeah. Well. Um, 
um, I did try and have Allie set up a meeting, and that did not work either. So I have tried to have the Policy and Personnel Committee meet, because I thought if they could meet at 6 o'clock prior to our meeting, then it would maybe work out for them. But mm -hmm. that did not work out that day either. Okay. Well, can we ask Dan to... I think it's up to create a, to you know, a bring a meeting or get a meeting yeah, going. So. You know, and Bart, you can help with that. I will. Yeah. I will. I'll talk to Rich Initiate. too. Yeah. I mean, Rich. I'll, I'll talk to Rich after yeah. our meeting tonight, and and um, yeah, that, bring that. bring him up to speed with regard to to this. Yeah. Okay. Because that needs to be initiated. Right. You know, soon and start uh, information. Because there are for, there are. That's the committee that most supports Linda in, in, in her leadership of that. Right. Okay. Thank you, Bill, for bringing mm -hmm. that up, and we needed that to get initiated. Okay, communications programming specialist report. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Um, I basically handed out three flyers. Um, one is the rental evaluation, uh, the second is for library cards, and then the third is for um, a workshop that I attended. Um, it's actually a webinar on uh, data gathering for the communities that we're in and then other libraries that had gathered data for themselves. So the first one, um, rental evaluations, was through the summer and the fall season. Um, I didn't write down there the number that I collected, it might be skewed a little bit, but basically um, what the survey indicates is that people learn of the rental collection by walking in, coming into the library, um, and I'm not sure how many people are actually reading the paper to find out about the library events or services offered here, and how, um, if that's actually working for the library to advertise in the paper. Most people come in and find out about our services by walking in, so we need to figure out um, how to get more people to meet. Um, they mostly rent on a weekly or monthly basis, and their interest is in both DVDs and books. So it kind of, I guess, it balances out pretty well. Um, and they would like to see more DVDs added to the library collection. That's what they indicate. Um, do you have any questions about that? I don't know if the balance is out. It looks like they 16 said they rent DVDs. And three said books. Is plus, that right? Plus another eight people for we'll see that we'll check. See. Oh, oh. Oh. Hmm. I guess I'm just questioning the balance out because it doesn't to me look like it balances. Uh, Looks like most of the people come for a DVD, or they come for a DVD and books. Well, it doesn't exactly balance out. It's just there's a number of people that do come for books. Mm -hmm. We've moved locations. The book, the new releases for the books are up here, because the rest of the books are up here, and the DVDs are downstairs. So we're hoping to get more people if they're coming upstairs to look for books and they're not aware of the new releases. That hopefully it brings them closer. Mm -hmm. so. Explain the asterisk for the signage. There's a couple of patrons during the summer that had mentioned maybe the signage wasn't too clear, um, so I made the sign bigger and then we redrafted the, the flyers, so those have been changed and fixed. And new signs have been put up, which are kind of noticeable. I don't know if they're that attractive, but <laughs> they're there, so basically they catch people's attention. And then the second handout is um, something we're doing for the holidays. So does everybody here have a library card? Or know of anybody that does not have a library card? So um, it's part of marketing, hopefully, to grab people's attention for the holidays. So there are people that we do, you know, give you a library card. If you're an in-state resident, um, there's no fee for that. And just to promote our services and programs here to allow people to be familiar about what we offer. Did you make this up? Yeah. Very nice job. Yeah. Very nice That's job. Cool. And then are these distributed as is then, or how are these? Yeah. Where are these at? These are just within the library, but I'm okay. checking with the paper to see if they'll place it at it. 
Very nice job. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to make copies as many as you want. So, um, so th there's just stacks of these around, or? Well, I'm going to be replacing them. Um, yeah, so. okay. Just a reminder to come home and And then the third piece that I handed out for a that though. Linda and I are working on a script for the we're doing an e-newsletter, so if she has time to film a little bit tomorrow, um, we can talk about that later. Um, but that basically is an introduction of who we are as a library. Um, I think collection is important to remind patrons that we have 77,000 materials housed in the library. In our Moore catalog, offers over a million items from 52 libraries. We also have our statewide collection with CAT. Um, I wasn't able to get an actual number on the materials they have, but that offers access to academic, medical, agency, and public library collections throughout the state of Wisconsin. So certainly it's a lot bigger than the rest of the numbers. And then to remind people that we have over 41,000 um, audio and ebooks on the Wisconsin Digital Library webpage, which we're also connected with. So it's a um, reminder to the public that we have a lot of you know, materials here in the library, but we have much more that you can connect with you as well, all using a, a library card. So. And then also in the script, we'll talk about our library services and programs, and then just remind people of those as well. So the other handout that I passed out is a map of the Hudson area and the different municipalities within it. And I noticed that we usually talk about um, how many card holders we have or how many materials are in our collection, but we haven't really talked about how our population measures up to how many card, card holders that we have. So my big question here is who or where are we missing? And this map kind of indicates those areas. Um, St. Joe's, we're missing about 60%. Um, Hudson, Township of Hudson, the Village of Hudson, we're missing about 50%, um, or that's a town of Hudson. Oh. Village of Hudson, we're missing about 45, and then the City of Hudson, we're missing about 40. So our service population is about 30,000, and our card holders are at about 16,000. So it's 45% of that population as, as a whole are missing. So my question is, you know, why is that basically? At first glance, it looks like you're, it's because of proximity to the library. Yep, that could be right? just location. Just location. People maybe. aren't able to get here or if they're close to other libraries. But um, kind of piecing together a map just to get a look, um, a picture of you know, what we're at right now. So. These are card holders. Mm -hmm. So the question. How would this compare to, to another library? Um, and that's what I'll get into. Um, I attended a workshop on data gathering. And basically, they were talking about how their library um, gathers data and how they piece that information together. Um, so I learned a bunch of different things. One of their suggestions was to analyze previous surveys that we've done. And we had one in 2011. I don't know if we've done one previous to that, but um, we have results from surveys that have never been analyzed. And I think that would be important for the board to think about and look over. Um, that would give us a lot of information on demographics and who's using the library. And then from that information, we can organize our services and programs based on that. Um, Ellie, mm -hmm. do we know, is there any way to know, for example, in particular in St. Joe, but that's my interest, um, how many of the residents of St. Joe have uh, library cards for the Somerset Library? Is there a way to get our hands on that information? I would think so. Too. I mean, that would be that would be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah, because here on the on the map it indicates here's Somerset Library, here's New Richmond. They're both about 30 minutes away. Right. And then the bottom here we have Roberts, 15 minutes away, and um, let me see here. Yeah. I think just those three there. Yeah. 
Somerset it's, and Stillwater. I mean, there's an awful lot of people in St. Joe that mm -hmm. just head across the bridge and go do their business and yeah. shopping well, and doctoring and they have to pay Stillwater. For that. They have to pay yeah, but still, it's yeah, it's, right, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's an alternative for right, those right, people. Right, right, right. It's closer exactly. to that bridge right, yeah. versus yeah. coming down here. Right. So it might be good to get a hold of that. Um, right out of there. Yeah. Now, also with regard to this, you know, this these numbers look big. You know, if, if we took a look at Somerset, Roberts, and, and uh, um, I don't know, not, not River Richmond, Falls. River Falls, for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have no idea what percentage they have of card holders. We may be over. Yeah. I mean, uh, it looks like a big number, but without knowing yeah. what somebody else is, we well, may is actually have a lot of card holders. Yeah, that's what I missed on here, um, River Falls. So, just, I'm just pointing out that our population, service population is 30,000, and we have 16,000 card holders. And I just thought that was interesting. And we wanted to display that on the map to sort of get us you know, started looking at that and finding out. And the think, the my recollection is that nationally, just across the whole United mm -hmm. States, about two thirds of people are public library card holders. <laughs> but I, I'd have to go back and double check. Yeah, that. But I my, that my recollection is that too. number, we are lower than the national average. But I don't know how that compares with... Yeah. with We're, right, but you also right. have condensed populations yeah. around libraries and other areas. Yeah, I wasn't trying to compare with other libraries right. at this point, just to draw out a map right, right. of gathering you know, where we're at right now and what it looks like. So they suggested analyzing surveys that we've done in the past, working with other organizations locally. Um, their example was the United Way drafts their own survey of their community to find out. Um, this is a, um, a graphic chart of um, what's the highest priority based on need in the community. And it ranges um, from new development, youth crime, down to obesity, and then the library would use this chart to create programs from this information or to network with other organizations. If there's a huge service need in, that, in an area in St. Joe's, um, then maybe we need to bring that organization here to do workshops and kind of encourage people to attend from St. Joe's. Hey, Sam is here. Sam is here. <laughs> um, so, Reviewing other surveys from organizations, what are the highest priorities and needs of the community? Reviewing patron usage patterns, when people come into the library to figure out what they're coming here for, what are they, you know, what are they checking out, what programs are they attending, um, to add more of those programs if they're heavily attended. Um, and then I created this map because they suggested doing some marketing segmentation or data mapping. And this was a, a map of their county and Shawnee and the colors indicate different areas of the community and they name them, you know, maybe this is a college area, maybe this is an area where there's a lot of families, and to figure out who's attending in these areas and to create more programs for them. And then also to analyze, oh, I guess I covered that. So there's some different charts for their library there. Um, so, yeah, that's basically my point. Cardholders versus population. Um, where and who are we missing? And how do we meet their needs? To look at organizations that are very popular there and to work with those. Um, I believe you know, the library provides something for everybody. It's a lot of have. Um, so what are we not offering them? Or are they just not aware, period? Or are we not getting the message across to them? And right now it's big for libraries to collaborate with their communities. In my hometown of St. Paul, there's a lot of reconstruction where libraries are uniting with community centers, or the YMCA, or things like that. Or, um, um, we don't actually have to share the same building, but we should be reaching across, like with the YMCA over there. Um, what's, the, what's the largest population of people we can get in the group? Like if we're going to go out and try to get more groups and meetings and participation from the community. Can we house 100 people at a time, 300 people at a time? What? In this library? Yeah, like if we're going to house. 
he bends the knees. Yeah. Um, but basically, I think it tells you by the door. Yeah, room capacity for this room is oh. not that high. But if this room could be used all the time, if we could get it booked, you know, solid and get organizations in here talking about, um, you know, like, there's heroin drug problems in the city of Hudson, I'm sure. A lot of people would be interested in attending meetings on that. And it was a well, that's what I was area. thinking about. I did go to that, but there was like a yeah. lot of people. So I thought that could have worked in yeah. our building. If we did something maybe weekly or monthly, maybe we could, you know, get it down to a smaller small size. So this room is rated for 32 people in chairs. I know we've had 50 in here before, it's crowded. <laughs> but it's. There are no tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> we have tried using the lobby, but in reality, then the access to the doors is a big problem. Because people crowd in and they're standing. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to suggest that our committees are forming to all here with the policy committee, but maybe possibly setting up a marketing committee. Um, one of our employees, his dad works. Um, for a large company and he does the marketing for them. So maybe forming a community of volunteers that would be willing to come in and suggest marketing ideas for the library. Um, possibly interns you know, from a couple of colleges around here, they might be willing to do that unpaid as a part of the school project and toss around ideas or create things for the library. Um, one program that I discussed with Linda was doing something like we were discussing the title called Community Connects. Um, to figure out what organizations are around the city of Hudson and to get them coming into the library to have open forums with the public to discuss what services they offer, um, how they can help the community, and just to you know form dialogue and discussion and things like that. And I'm sure that would create a lot of interest in the community. So I've been digging through the paper to find out you know, what's been in the paper, what might be interesting to people in doing programs aligned to that. So, yeah. I think that's basically it for me. So. Very cool. Very, very good job. And she has one final thing to announce. So, if no one would like me to announce that, I'll be resigning. Um, I'd love them to know that a couple of weeks ago. Um, just for personal reasons, um, family reasons, that I'll be going in to I'm not sure yet, but <laughs> into a new direction. So, but I'll still be uh, residing in Hudson, so I'll be around bringing my son in for story time. So, I'll actually have time because <laughs> I won't be working late at night. So, and that is an effective one. That's a surprise, yeah. That's, That's effective. Part one. of the reasons why I you know, made the suggestion of forming a, um, a marketing committee. So. Okay. Wow. Wow. Get all this good information going, and you're gonna be well, What's the effective date? Um, it'll be the end of this year. First of the year, January, first of December, the first. Oh. Maybe about a month. Wow. Well, well, wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> so, it's been uh, good having you around. <clears throat> um, okay. Friends of the library, want to say, have anything to offer this evening? No one actually asked me or warned me that I should make a presentation. I just uh, had the evening free and wanted to drop in and see how you were doing, as I do occasionally. Sure. If there are any questions, I might be able to answer. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, I'm uh, just here in an unofficial capacity. I appreciate you coming. It's just a spot on the agenda. And I saw it. The, it's a kind of a, it's a regular spot. So. <coughs> Okay, uh, President's comments, well, President's not here, so I can't comment. So. Um, I don't really have anything to say. I did talk to Rich earlier this week, and, uh, and we discussed a couple things that are coming up on, down, uh, on the agenda, so I'll withhold my comments for that. Dave, I did um, attend the forum, the most recent um, forum okay. that he listed there, okay. and um, I think it's... The, the dialogue is continuing between the three organizations, the, the Library Foundation, the Friends of the Library, and, um, and then Rich and I have been attending as, as current and, and most 
recent president of the library board. And I think that they're very, very positive. Um, we're talking about how we might, in fact, um, secure the future of the library. And um, there's a lot of positive. I think the, the biggest um, question is um, creating some stability, and we'll be addressing that issue later. So, um, and the next um, getting the gathering is scheduled for seven o'clock on the Wednesday after the ne next library board meeting, whatever it is. I think that might be the 20th of January at um, seven o'clock in the history room, so. After the minute, after the January meeting? Yeah, this, the day after. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, the 20th, the, the 22nd. 20th. Or whatever, the, the, yeah, yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, yeah, then it must be January 22nd. Excuse yeah. me, I had the wrong day. January 22nd, Wednesday. Um, and that's actually, you should say the 14th. What should say the 14th? The date of the next meeting is 2014, not 2013. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Yeah, and Rich and I talked just briefly <laughs> yeah, about no, that, too, yeah. so that's good. Thank you. Finance Committee. Finance Committee report and requests for actions. Finance Committee uh, reviewed the expenditures of revenue and had some discussion on uh, book expenditures, which appear to be going to exceed the budget. And uh, two, two points on that. One is we need to change the system of expenditures since we're not meeting our book budget expenditure. There has to be a better system in place to control that. And secondly, uh, we talked about offsetting the overage on book expenditures with other line items so that we don't go further uh, off of our budget on the uh, total negative uh, expenditures for the year or revenue and net income. Uh, so we did have a discussion on that, and uh, that will hopefully take care of the problem that exists right now. Um, the other one is the claims. We have claims for $73,000 currently. Of that $73,000, $35,000 of that is salary, which is basically recurring, and $10,000 or $11,000 of that is the rent. So $45,000 of the 73 that needs to be paid uh, is basically recurring expenses. So basically there's $28,000 that we reviewed in detail and did not find anything unusual or exceptional uh, with those expenditures. And so we recommend approval of the twenty of the seventy three thousand dollar expenditures. Rich, can I ask a question sure. going back to books? Um, is is that a monthly amount you're looking at? Because when I when we look at the twelve month budget, it looks like one is in November, it looks like Linda's spending to the budget. And then there's twelve thousand dollars remaining, twenty percent of the budget, with only two weeks to go. Linda, I don't know if you can comment on that. In other words, I think you're looking at books for the month. We're looking at books for the year. We're underspending for the year, but it looks like Linda's trying to overspend to meet the allocated budget. In our, in our discussion, what it appears to be is that there are some books that apparently go on back order, so the, the liability for the expenditure exists. And then all of a sudden, they send those books, and we have to pay for those books, but we haven't taken the back order into account. And so while we think we're spending, and if I'm explaining this correctly, you, you correct me. So while we think we're spending according to the budget, these back orders are not being accounted for, and when they're shipped, we have to pay for them. And once we've spent our budget, that pushes us over the budget. Okay, and I don't want to. I don't want to mix these two agenda I items. Explain them properly. Uh, no, I, I, I think I get that. So a lot of the books that were coming due came in in, in, uh, in, in the month, and so it was over. But there's still twelve thousand dollars for the year that's left. But that difference is in the items that we were asked to approve. So there's twelve thousand dollars in books that we approved. There's not a December column. There's, not, there's a not a December column. That's my question. So your amount is what? About what 12, did you say, books? Twelve five. She's asking for approval for. So we're going to. So twelve three. 
So we got 12.3 left without the December column there. So you're spending basically the budget. We're $150 over budget. Is that right? But then she said there's also going to be more than what we're approving. She's looking. She's saying there's going to be more than what we're asked to approve the 12.5. So yes, what we approve tonight, it would be about a break even. But she wants us to approve more next month. Okay. Well, that goes to my first issue then, and it looks like you're spending to the budget and you missed because it all came at the last two months. You got you got 45 percent of the yearly budget in November and December. It's hard to manage it when it goes to that extreme, I think is really what happens. So going forward, if, if you need that money, can, it, can you spread it out a little more during the year so you have a more, a more frequent flow of new arrivals? I guess that's my question. Rather than knowing what the budget is and spending to it right at the end. I allocate a certain amount to children's, and I really have to push. And I finally said to them, if you don't do it, you're going to lose it. That's why you're seeing a bigger amount there. Um, they did not, they do it every, every year to me. It's like that. It's like, if you don't do it, you lose it. Right. That's the problem and with so, budgets. And then that did go over because there was a discrepancy. Uh, I remember correctly when we approved the budget and then it got changed somehow where it was less money for books but I cannot swear to it um, I think we're gonna have the same problem next year because we have a budget that's been approved I gave you an adjusted budget but you're saying this is the budget and I'm telling you there will be more expenditures coming in. I, I, I think we might see that. But I as get far that. as I'm me looking for look, managing the budget is what I'm asking. I'm trying my best to manage it. I do not look at it and say, oh part time has a lot of money sitting there. I do not try to go in and get that money and spend it. I cannot give you a full history of what happened. And, and I'm not asking that. I'm but looking I'm at the not. spending habits and you got 45% that's sitting in the last two months. That's my only point. And the other thing is I'd like to say in the 10 years I've been here, we've always underspent. Mm -hmm. I do not try to look at each item and say, whoa, we, got, we could take some money here and use it there. I do not do that. I think one of the issues is that Linda has tried to delegate responsibility for the decision of book purchasing. Yes, I did do that. And, and with new responsibility and um, there's some um, education that probably needs to go along with that. And you're probably right, encouraging the folks who she's delegated that responsibility to, to um, take action earlier in the year is a really good thing. But that's, it's, it's part of <laughs> the downside of delegating and getting, giving other people some of that responsibility. And she made the statement earlier that in our, in our meeting that she's, she's given that person a budget. Well, next year she's going to reduce that budget to try to smooth it out and, and mm -hmm. come in under. So. I think that's my only point. And then how much extra were you asking for then? The, the to circle all the way back around? The total expenditures? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Seventy-three thousand nine thirty-three zero one. But on that line item, what it it was twelve five plus. 12. You were expecting more, Linda, right? Twelve right. five in these expenditures, and you were thinking maybe five or six thousand, thousand that will come in again. Over that. Five or six thousand more. So we'll be over budget. I'm, I'm, Ooh, I'm going to say that amount because I'm going to play safe. But it's still an overage, that's what hurts. Mary, we're not asking for that five or six thousand dollars now. We're not approving okay. it at this point. Okay. Yeah. We're just taking the twelve thousand five that we has yes to length Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry to revisit it. No, no, that's, no, no. I think it's a good discussion so that yes. we know what oh, we're everybody watching. Needs, everybody needs to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, was, it was discussed uh, okay. at length. So I guess I would entertain a motion to pay that, to authorize payment of the, of those expenses. Okay. Somebody wants to take it. 
a motion? Yes. A second to that motion? I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say we're always on the hook anyway. Yeah, the way it's done, yeah, that's kind of yeah. silly. It's we have to act so the city will yeah. pay the bills. Yeah. You know, we have to, we'll put the official stamp on it. <laughs> the uh, has to approve it. Yeah. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. We looked into the back pay, payroll, bi weekly payroll. Actually, there was a, a difference in those two, and Linda got an explanation from Neil, I guess. and. It was kind of a bookkeeping thing that they did. Um, the person entering payroll was entering back pay for, for the police officers and did not change the coding when they entered our <laughs> salary. <laughs> so, a mistake. <laughs> um, last month we had a question on our net revenue, our net revenue amount. And I remember you asking Barb what that meant. Okay, right now, if you look in November, are we do we have pages that we're looking at? Page number pages? 14. 13 and 14. 14 is the revenue. Okay. It's a very Okay. If you look at the second to last column right here, under revenue it says we have nine hundred and twenty-three thousand. we've under budget or you know we we have not used that 923000 right here. <coughs> and then, right here, remember this was 200 and some thousand last month. Well, it's 134000 because we take away from that our expenditures from November. So we still are under budget at 134000 No, that's not... Okay. Right. Okay. The well, hundred and thirty-four thousand <clears throat> is a variance. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our original budget of negative sixty-seven thousand, mm -hmm. and currently year to date we are showing a profit of sixty-eight thousand. So it's the difference. It's a variance from a negative sixty-seven to a positive sixty-eight. That's the hundred thirty-four. So it's not income or expenses. It's a variance. From our original budget. Okay. If you spend, uh -huh. if the December column were here and you spent to the budget of the amount remaining, we're going to end up seventy-one thousand dollars short. Yeah. Which is what we budgeted. Yeah. So that was the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. That's just a variance. So you really want to look at actual year to date. That's really where we are at. Mm -hmm. Which is a good position, right? The next After eleven item. months. <laughs> yeah. The next item was the discussion on the employee wage increase. And as I said, the city is going to give their employees a two percent wage increase. The library employees are city employees. Um, I don't know if that mandates that the library employees get two percent, or if the board has the authority to say something different. But that was the open question. That was the question. That was the open question. I move that we approve a two percent increase for our staff. We have a motion. Is there a second? I, I think. Well, I, I'm going to second that. I think it was tied into it. Okay, discussion on the motion. You know, the discussion is that all of it ties together. It's not just about the employee increase. Right? I mean, am I wrong about that? I mean, the whole budget ties together. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And the question that's been on, I mean, for the last month is that I've been on this board for six months. I've been trying to find a way to make the budget whole, to, to balance the budget, right? It, it's pretty apparent to me that, from what I've seen, that we're not going to get, it doesn't look like we're going to have fundraising. Um, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, earlier in the meeting I reported very positive um, discussion with 
the four, the three organizations, the leaders of the three organizations, about the possibility of doing fundraising. We didn't say fundraising, no. We just said there was positive discussions. I didn't know if that meant fundraising or what that well, meant. Uh, um, for the for the future of the library, yeah. Well, we've been talking about that for five years. I mean, that's a that's been a, a bone of contention since the move here, mm -hmm. and. And so it's not until I guess, you know, I'm in sales, and until I see a firm purchase order, it's all discussion. There is no sale. So uh, well, there is no sale as, as far as fundraising, as far as I'm concerned. I, I believe it when I see it, so to speak. Uh, and if it happens, that's great. Um, it, hopefully it's not going to be too late because the, the, the library is in a, in the, in a bad position. Um, so. Ha having not seen any fundraising, my point is for the last six months, I have tried on several occasions at the meetings to entertain a discussion to reduce expenditures. One being employee health care, which I was told can't do. Um, one being the lease, which it looks like we're going to talk about in a, l a few minutes which I was told we can't do. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, number one, where we can cut expenditures. Um, and, and part of me is thinking, well, why is that my responsibility? And why, as a board member, versus the library director's responsibility to make the budget whole? So I, I'm trying to figure that out. You know, what, because... Well, let's be honest, the budget can't remain where it's at. And now we're entertaining a motion to give a 2% wage increase with a budget that's not whole. How, how, I, I'm trying to figure out how, I'm trying to, how to justify a 2% wage increase when we can't make the budget whole. Well, I believe that um, the partners that own the library four partners um, provided some relief. They increased um, their contributions in the library by 5%. Um, I believe that uh, with that additional income, uh, of additional revenue, that we, that part of that should be used to compensate our staff. They're doing an outstanding job. Um, I do not believe that we should be um, balancing the budget on their backs. I'm saying it very um, roughly, but um, we did receive additional revenue from our partners. Um, our partners are giving their staff increases. Um, and so I believe we should be giving our staff an increase. So the question I would have for you at that point then is where should we cut? Books periodicals. Books that's periodicals good. audiovisual. Yeah. Take it out of there. Well then okay. Then take so all right. That's, you can take a stab at it. That's great. So what I would be willing to say is that I would be willing to entertain a motion to give a two percent wage increase if we if we amended the motion to reduce by the same amount or more somewhere else in the budget to make the budget whole. Because we're not doing anybody any justice. We're not doing the employees any justice by operating a deficit, nor the taxpayers. Uh, and we really need to focus on making this budget whole. So I'm good. I would be good, OK, with a 2% wage increase, as long as we can, at the end of the day, say we're whole. and. That discussion also entertains, you know, Indian Head Federation and the huge increase that we've received from them, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, so, I mean, this is all encompassing. This isn't just about the two percent wage increase. So, my question then would be, if we're going to postpone this discussion with the Indian Head Federation until January, and we can't make the budget whole, I can't support a two percent wage increase unless it's part of a total package on making it whole. 
I want to put just simple dollars and cents to it. Looks like we're talking about six thousand dollars. So if we're seventy-one thousand in the hole, now we're seventy-seven thousand in the hole. Now the now the joint library partners came in and gave five percent, which is what thirty-five thousand. Okay. So the point is that we're moving forward, we're moving backwards, we're moving all around. We can cut. I agree with you, with you where some of the cuts is. I agree with you. I think that as part of the motion, that would be great too. I'm just going to throw it out and say, are we ready to do everything all at once? Or are we going to let everything sit independent and vote on one thing? Because certainly that's going to sway my decision. I would make an amendment to the motion that we give the employees a 2% wage increase um, um, on the premise that the board uh, at the January meeting uh, and with the help of the library director, of course, because Linda knows where you can cut and where you can, um, with the help of the library director, make the budget whole so that in January, starting that new year, we're not going to run a deficit. And I would support that. Uh, I would support that because it, it's, we're not going to be able to run the deficit and you know that it's going to get to this next, uh, this next item with the lease. Uh, and that all ties together. I hate to jump ahead, but it's all part of this. This is part of the budget. The lease is part of the budget. You can't support a, I, could, I couldn't also support um, extending the lease or signing a new lease based on a budget that uh, that's not whole that's 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 irresponsible well, they, 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 oh, wait a minute now okay let's time let's take a time out now we we started this five years ago with a with, a, with an understanding that we had a surplus in, of money and that we were going to begin a process to exhaust that surplus of money and have, and operate under a deficit at the same time a certain organization which will go nameless because of because I'm really pissed off at them. Uh, you know, signed up, was supposed to do the fundraising for the, for the capital purchase of the building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, yes, I did have another, you know, I, part of my chat with, with Rich was talking about what Barb alluded to, mm -hmm. that, that the foundation and the friends have been been really great partners for a long time. The foundation is changing their philosophy or changing their their whatever they have to change. Whether it's a charter or whatever, Lord knows I have to, the legalists, legalese of all of that. But they are changing and they are coming around to the point where you could have just said it, that the, the, the foundation is going to start doing some fundraising for operational expenses. The partners have anteed up. The partners are now in support of the, the, the library. Um, the, the partners all anteed up the extra 5%. I see the partners going forward in the next few years is continuing to, you know, to support the library. Our hands were tied. You have to remember that our hands are and were tied by the governor. We could not increase our levies. Uh, being an elected official, you know, I mean, <laughs> there was nothing we could do. Okay, so you you got to you got to look at the big picture. You can't just say, "Boom!" In January, we're going to have a no deficit budget. You can't. That's impossible. There's no way. What's happening is the partners the the, the partners contributions are increasing. We're trying to hold expenses, and, and, and in any way, way shape or form we can, we will try to reduce expenses. And it's going to balance out, but it's not going to happen in one month. Absolutely not. You know. So I mean, it, and. And that's as much as I want to get into in history because I've been this, I've been down this road, right. the same exact road that you that you want to go down for five years, and Marion knows it well, and Barb knows it well, and I'm not going to get on the soapbox again tonight and get and go there. But what I, you know, the city's employees are getting a two percent raise. That's going to take into ten percent of the of the partner's increases, or fifteen percent. You know, that's going to eat into a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. The employees, you know, the employees could use a bump. It's nice to get a bump. You know, we all in our jobs like to get bumps now and then. 
You know, so it's not going to happen overnight. Absolutely won't. I and there's no and there's no pipe dream and <laughs> that that could possibly bring that to fruition in a month. So you know, I mean, we have to be realistic. My opinion, um, Karen. Yeah. I think the the two percent is warranted. It's minimal in the whole budget, and we did agree to start out with a negative seventy four thousand. We have to remember workers. Um, the health insurance stayed the same. We were willing to have a higher insurance and line item for that. So even though we are getting a little more income, we have a higher um, library Indian head cost. I think we can, overall, we were starting out with a bigger deficit. I think the 2% is minimal and, and warranted. And, I think that's yeah. and we certainly dive into Mr. Thompson next month. I mean, Rich asked to put it off only because so he can be, so he could be here and be part of that discussion on part, you know, and, and, and that's fine. Part of, part of the discussion with, with John. So, I, I would just like to jump in and ask one question regarding um, the 5% increase. What I don't know at this time is, is that into perpetuity or is it year by year for each municipality, township, city? In other words, the town, of Hits, it's town it's of Hudson, what are we doing? It's today? year by year. Nothing's been planned in perpetuity. That's a year to year thing. thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm simply yeah. asking because I know it's not contractual, yeah. it's voluntary, but I just didn't know what the town had decided yeah. or what the other municipalities had decided. The so The town has not made a decision one way or the other. The, what I'm hearing from, I love using, using the term heads of state, what I'm hearing from the heads of state because they continue to have discussions mm -hmm. is that going forward they will continue to to ante up a little more contributions every year. Yeah, but I don't see, I certainly don't think we're going to see 5% uh, on a yearly basis. I mean, it depends on what kind of a year we have. If we don't have, if we, hey, if this is all the snow we're going to get for a year, then we're going to have a heck of a budget next year and we're going to have a hell of a surplus, you know, where, where we don't have to pay, pay the county to follow our roads. Right. And so we can afford to give them more. <coughs> What I failed to, to share earlier was that Alan Birchall actually attended the meeting we just had or had earlier this month. And he um, in, in, had a similar perspective with regard to the city of Hudson, that going forward there was likely to be um, continuing support for the library. Yes. Yeah. Increasing support for the library. Well, support might be 2%. Well, it might, it might, it's not, I, I don't think they're going to... I, I, I I actually, I... I think they're going to look at 5% a year, but, you know. Well, if, well, but but it's been nothing for five years. So all of a sudden, well, okay, so now we're doing five. I Next year, maybe we do four or three, you know. Right. Okay, we'll do what we can afford. Yeah. But I think you will see increases. My point I think you will see increases. My in point the remains. Going forward. And the other, and the, I, I want to say one other, one last yeah. thing. We weren't obligated to do that. We could have had Neil go through the numbers, and uh, and I've seen the calculations and the spreadsheets, and their hellacious formulas are in there. The, they're, they're God awful things to try to understand. We could have backed our contribution down to, you know, by 30% if we wanted to and still be exempted from the county tax. No, we went forward and we, we all, yeah. four partners, increased the donations. This, so. But my point remains intact. If, you're, if you were running a business and you were losing money, if, if you're running a business and you're losing money, Regardless of how well your employees perform, regardless of whether a raise is warranted, um, you wouldn't do it and run the business. You'd be out of business. Um, Depends they, on what you got in the bank. Well, we don't, we don't have enough in the bank to continue to cover. That's the reason why we have the discussion, because that's been dwindling over the last five years pretty substantially. Uh, so, you know, and, 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 and again, I'm just going to throw this out there. If anybody else wants to come up with an idea on how to reduce expenditures, I'm more than willing to listen to it. Um, but it seems like I'm kind of beating my head against the wall when I come to these meetings, hoping that we can find some way to reduce expenditures and make the budget whole. But instead, we're not only not finding ways to decrease spending and make the budget whole, finding ways to increase the expenditures. So. That, that just seems to be going in the wrong direction, but... I'm, I'm going to jump in one here. Was there, a, was, was there a second to your amendment of the motion? I no. Did no. you okay? Is it was an amendment? 
No, yeah. not to the amendment. Yeah. No, there. No. Okay, no. I, I, I seconded Barb's. I apologize. We actually, I should have asked. I should ask. Should have asked for a second. I'm going to be very clear then why I'm voting no. I think the, we understand why you're voting. No. I'm voting no because there, it doesn't seem like we're willing to cut expenditures in any of these areas um, in order to make the budget whole. You made you amended the motion. Was there a second to the amendment? If not, the the amendment fails. The amendment is not. What's what's I'm asking? I, please right. Please what I'm asking. Was there a second? No. No, okay. no there wasn't okay. a second at this point. But I don't know if if the amendment was clear. Or what I would would you like I'm to tying in the it? fact that we would buy you know, vote. I would vote. You know, to raise the employee wages by two percent. If by January at the next meeting uh, we were able to um, find areas to cut the budget in order to have a zero deficit. And, and I could support a wage increase at that point. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so secondly, is you missed your 59 minute mark. I know. But we, look, uh, but we but look a lot like the federal government when we say we're going to increase spending now and find ways to cut spending later. That's the, the argument they've been having at the our federal revenues are increasing. Our in re revenues are increasing faster than our expenses are increasing right now. Okay. Agree. It's not a. It, it, but it's it's not a given that that's going to continue to happen. Agree. We hope not. No. We hope. We hope. There's a lot of hope. We hope it will continue. Okay. I, 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 uh, go ahead. Last comment. The last comment. It's it's a tough one. One is uh, raises on 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 salaries and pays are basically in perpetuity because we can't go backwards. I agree with Kurt's motion on the surface that I think we can easily find 2% to cut somewhere. And we haven't even got to, to, the, to the next line item. We haven't figured out this if list thing. You know, there's, I think, books, like you said. Yeah. There's a lot of area to do it. Uh, I, I think the motion, though, for the second is going to fail because we're never going to get to a zero budget right now in a month. And that's the issue I have with it. I think employees and salaries and increases are important. But coming out of the same trade as he's in, I just got back from my yearly, we, twice a year we meet, our company took a tremendous hit. We all took pay decreases, my pay 40%. So I'm sitting here with a 40% decrease for the second time in five years. So that's hard to swallow. So we could talk about wages, but in reality, to Kurt's point, is it happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm suffering. I'm not afraid to do the pay, but I think in reality, it's not a give me in any means. Uh, I did second the motion because because of the zero budget thing at that you added to the end of it, Kurt. I, it's a whole mixed bag right, right here. I did not. Yes. No. Right. Because of the zero. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor to for a two percent increase for the employees per the you know going along with the cities. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Aye. Four to two. Four to two. Motion carried. Okay. Personnel committee report. Request for action. Nothing there. Didn't meet. Didn't meet. Ad hoc committee report. It's in the Is that packet. you, Barb? It's in, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. It's in the packet. Um, so we currently. Um, use about 20,000 square feet of this building um, and at $130,000 of, of expense for that, that's approximately six and a half dollars a square foot, which is approximately half of the um, commercial rent rate for Hudson. Um, and our occupancy expense includes uh, janitorial services and utilities. 
Um, when we moved here, the cost for the move, um, remodeling the building to create a library in the space and to equip the building with shelving and um, other fixtures was $715,000. We've explored um, other options with partnerships, for example. In Duran, there is a community li library that is located in the high school. However, there are a variety of issues with that um, configuration, including security and, and um, limits on access because it's in the high school building and the security that needs to be in place to protect the high school, um, as well as issues around um, censorship and access at hours that the school is not open. So um, we've talked to Hudson uh, School District and they are um, willing to talk, but not until they, if we were talking about gaining space from them, not until their own space issues are resolved would they be willing to talk to us. We discussed, and I didn't put it in here, a variety of other possible partnerships, but not related to space. Partnerships with the FIPS, for example. Um, and that discussion went on a bit at the meeting that we had earlier this month with the, um, whatever, the, the um, collaboration meeting. And um, so if there could come a time when the city actually no longer uses their, the other part of this building for police, and there's, although Alan didn't think that would happen in, in, for quite some time, there might be partnerships with the FIPS or other not-for-profit organizations that would use some of, this, of the building space. Um, so at the end of the day, at this particular point, um, the, the ad hoc committee, which is Rich O'Connor, myself, and Dan Koch, I recommend that we extend the lease for five years. Um, it's, it's a very good deal. Um, I, I suspect the city knows what a good deal that they're provided. And we appreciate it. Um, it's not the kind of deal we'd get anyplace else. Um, and why for six, why for five years? If we are going to be successful in raising money to um, bridge the extended gap that we will have, we would anticipate we might not be at a point where we are totally whole for five to ten years in order to raise the funds and have the community believe that it is a, a, an organization worth investing in that has a long-term future in this building, we need to provide stability. We need to be able to go to our community and say, this is where the library is and will be for the foreseeable future, and with your help, we can overcome this um, deficit, that situation that's been created, and um, we will get to a point where our communities can make us whole. And we will, we will cover that interim. But if what we're saying is we don't know what the future is, we don't know where we're going to be, it is very, going to be very difficult to um, raise the funds needed because people need to have confidence and have, and we need to, so, so I, um, I move that we renew our lease, exercise the option to renew the lease. Is that on this, uh, this is on? Uh, That's on uh, item 14. So you end of your report. That's end of the report. End okay, so we can't make a motion yet, right? We're going to the next one? All right, yes, that's correct. So, so that's the end of our report. So any, other, any other any questions of Barb on her report? Okay, let's move on to item 14, building lease deadline. Discussion for possible action on lease extension. 
and the lease is up the end of this month, so we do have to act somehow in some fashion. So the city very much wants us to stay in this building. They very much believe. That's exactly what Alan said. They very much want us to stay in this building. Um, so a couple of points, if I might. First one is the uh, value of the building. The part about it's a value, half of the current going rate. It's irrelevant. I mean, it's, as I've mentioned before, I think, it's like telling somebody that this Cadillac is a great deal, but they don't have the money for that. They don't have the money to, to pay for it, regardless if it's a good deal. We don't have the money to pay for it, so the fact that it's a good deal is irrelevant. This, the, the second part is kind of like the, uh, the, the, the argument that, that the library board needs to show good faith in extending a, uh, or assigning a new five-year lease in order so that money can be raised to support the lease is the same argument that was made five years ago and it's kind of like Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. I mean uh, th the football is going to be pulled out again and Charlie Brown's going to take a swing at it it's not going to be there um, because there is no again I'm going to go back to this being in sales there is no purchase order there is no firm commitment there is no the first step in a fundraising effort has to be made by the people that are going to make the fundraising. They need to show the good faith. The people that are going to raise the money to support the lease, to support the operation of the library, to be in this building for the next five years, they have to show the good faith. They have to sign on the dotted line that they're going to raise the money. And so it's because that other way that the taxpayers show good faith and the library board show good faith before the other people commit has been that way for five years with nothing to show for it. So I would definitely vote against signing a new five-year lease with the city based on the fact that, that we are out of money and that a new five-year lease is unsustainable. It's unsustainable. That doesn't do anybody any good. It doesn't do the city any good. It doesn't do the taxpayers any good to sign a lease either. Again, I'm going to use the term irresponsible. I think it would be irresponsible for me to vote yes to sign a lease for five years with the city of Hudson, knowing full well that the budget is not whole and is continuing to leak uh, and will be out of money. How can I, I cannot justify a yes vote for that unless I could be convinced otherwise. I'm going to vote in favor of it because if you don't go with the ten, if you don't go with the five-year lease, or if you don't go with the lease from the city, which is the best deal in town, you might as well close up, close up the library, shut it down, and get it get it over with. Because you have no place to go with this library. You're out in the street, so you might as well close the doors. And and I don't think we're in a position to close the doors. So it's either five years or nothing. I think we Richard need some continuity and some stability that we can present as a as a whole and then we can continue to work on the details of the budget like you said where else are we going to go it's going to cost us more money more dollars more chaos it is it is reasonable where are you going to go where you can spend ten thousand dollars in rent per month rich had a conversation that he related to me last when i talked to him on the phone he had a conversation with al uh, al virtual the mayor and he said he said again quoting the heads of state and i this is you know kind of hearsay ish but he said he had he had the conversation and the heads of state have had the conversation they are in favor of the library they are supporting the library they will continue to support the library they they feel yeah it, it isn't going to happen overnight but but they feel we have no options we have you know this is the best deal in town as as a probably the ad hoc committee came up with um and that that Yes, if we do get to that point where we are flat broke, dead, out of money, out of out of options, 
the city's not going to hold us to this lease. If if we can't afford it, flat, flat out can't afford it, the mayor has said, yeah, they're you know, hey, you're gonna you're gonna have to shut the doors and close her down and and walk away. And that's the city's not going to sue us for the remainder of the of the lease or whatever. It's a form. The, the, I shouldn't say it's a formality. It's a five-year lease. That's the way that the lease agreement was structured in the at the onset, as to five-year terms, renewable, renewable for another five years. So, um, and I think that's all I remember from my notes. Just trying to do it off the cuff. But yeah, the the support is the support from the partners. Partners are on board. Uh, we need some. We need to show a commitment. We need to show uh, show that uh, uh, we are committed to trying to make this work. The partners are committed to trying to, you know, to ante up more each year or do what they, what they are within their within their means. And so those are our Rich's comments, Rich's and Albert's comments. You know, uh, that's that's what I heard from Rich. They have no, no disrespect at all um, to everybody's thoughts and feelings on, on Elise. I certainly have my own, you know, uh, Kurt brings up some tough reality, of course, with, with all of it. Mm -hmm. I, like yourself, being involved from the beginning, you know, I've seen this thing go up and down, and uh, the real issue with the building, the lease, and with the library being here is we didn't have to be here. We were, we were squeezed in here with the events that happened that didn't happen. And uh, so, so we're here, okay, we understand that. It doesn't mean, Rich, though, that there are no other options. Certainly the board can find an option somewhere down the road if they needed to. And my concern isn't about the lease itself and being in the building. Kurt said when he joined the board, he'd love to see him stay here. So would I. Mm -hmm. the, the I issue, would. Yeah, the, the issue is, is, Dave, and this is where the no disrespect comes in, the more and more and more that the town, the partners, the village, the city put in, it's more and more taxpayer money just moving into the library. And so we'll never get even without taxes supporting it. And so there's no incentive for fundraising to kick in. To that point, let me get to the end of this, I would say, I'll vote for a lease. I think, A, it gives who's ever going to do the fundraising, to your point, you got to have credibility. I think it gives them credibility. Hey, the library board just stepped up for another year for a lease that they can't afford. We need your help. I think that shows credibility. So that's one angle that I'm coming from. And two is, the city can't fill this building tomorrow since we're two weeks away from January 1st. Why don't we go in with a one-year lease or a two-year lease? Or why don't we go in with a two-year lease at 125000 and that will pick up the slack for the 2% wage increase right there. I mean, there's a lot of options in between five years at the current price. I mean, it's not all or none. We knew this was going to be a long discussion, and we put it off till two weeks before. And that, and that makes my point too, Mary. Is why is it set in stone that it's the current rate plus inflation? Correct? Is that the lease? Current rate one hundred thirty-two. I, I don't know the details. It, it's it's uh, the consumer. It says consumer price yeah. index CPI, mixed in yeah. Minneapolis. Okay, so it's a CPI. So it's. So what we're talking about is $132,000, right? That's where we're currently at, I think, uh, approximately, right? $132,000? Well, we have $132,414 in for next year. Okay. $132,000 plus the CPI. Um, I, the, I, I believe the first meeting I was at, uh, the first meeting I came to, I talked about, and I continue to talk about looking for ways to reduce costs. And the lease should be no different than... Any other expenditure, uh, it, 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 your tenant can't afford the building. So why would the tenant sign up for a five-year lease? Uh, if you're a tenant in a building, in any situation, and you cannot afford the lease and make ends meet, you would renegotiate that lease 
with the person who's renting you the facility. Uh, to just say, point blank, we're just going to sign up for another five years at the same rate plus CPI, I, I don't see the benefit there. Uh, and I agree with Marion, the city's not going to fill the building. I mean, you know, it was a good deal for the city. The building has appreciated in value. The former mayor would not have signed up for the deal if it was not a good deal for the city. I get that. Um, but as a library board member representing North Hudson um, and the taxpayers of North Hudson, I don't think it's responsible for me. It, I think it's irresponsible for me to just sign up to another five-year lease at the current arrangement. I would go along with Marion's thought that I would possibly sign up for a one-year lease uh, taking into consideration finding the six or seven thousand dollars we just spent um, on employee wages increases to, to drop the lease to 125 for a year um, and give uh, you know this uh, committee time to look at fundraising and bring that forward and then when there's a solid more solid information on fundraising commit to a uh, longer lease. Dave, that's that's what I'd like to see, and I think that's that's the point I'm after. I think the five years better well served all of us to stay in the building if we know uh, we've been through it once, and it, and the fact that there's an effort is awesome. It would be nice to know that that effort's going to move forward. If we sign up now, there's no incentive to move it forward, no, no. And, and and that's where we were before. I think the incentive was lost. No, the incentive wasn't. I don't think you personally. My impression, <laughs> the, the personality is behind the incentive it. wasn't lost. It was the clown who was in the, the clown who was in the driver's seat lost. It was so, was another clown who was on the To be the, no. I, I think that the middle of the road is the, 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 I did not say Rich asked Al if they would consider reducing the rent. And and Al said no, they would not consider that, but they did give us an extra sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars. The city gave us a seventeen thousand dollar increase in their donation. Okay. There, there, there must be, I, I, I don't know all the details of the lease, but there must be a termination of lease clause which allows you to get out of the lease. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that was the one thing that he did say. I'm pardon, pardon me for yeah. interrupting. No, I'm just and saying. I, and reiter I, reiterate I, that part. That I haven't read all the details of it, but I know there has to be a termination of lease. I think, I think it would be uh, disbandment of the, of the joint library, I think, is if well, I'm understanding I'm, right. Then I don't know what the terms are, but I'm yeah. sure. And More mutual agreement certainly let you. No, I'm sure that part, this, you know? yeah, that Al did. You know, Rich said that Al said that yes, if we needed it over the lease, there was, it wasn't. It's too bad neither of them are here. But yes. I was actually heard the conversation. Well, the, and I, I can, re, I can concur whether you, I can concur. The that point that was said. though that you were making that the city is chipping in another sixteen, seventeen thousand. All the partners are chipping in an additional five percent. I have said from the beginning you have to differentiate in the, the lease and the lease agreement the city I and this is my opinion does not act as a joint partner they are they are a landlord there there when it comes to the lease it's the library board here as the tenant and the city as the landlord that's it it's not it has to be separated from the joint library agreement. They're simply, you know, as in the meeting tonight. Well, it is. It is separate. Rich is not here as a representative of the city for the council. He's a man sitting on the joint library board. Uh, oh, it is. So it is a complete. It is separate. There is a separate. It's a separate deal. deal. It is. So absolutely. that so that sixteen seventeen thousand doesn't really play into that lease agreement because all the joint library partners put in an additional five percent, and that was just their portion of the five percent. If you want to get into who's contributing to the library, it's all the taxpayers' money, and your taxpayers are we're all taxpayers. No, but it's a but, but, but it's a, it's a, 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 a taxpayers are contributing to the library. 
and I would say based on the rent that they're charging the library, they can charge, they're, they're contributing a larger amount than any of the other municipalities because clearly they could get more money if they wanted to toss the library out of here. They could either sell it for three and a half million dollars or they could get somebody in here as a tenant who would be a higher lease fee. So the, so the city elected and taxpayers are contributing at a larger rate to this library and there's no question about that. You can't argue that. Well, when you look at... So you ask them to contribute more, it's not reasonable. Well, it's interesting you state that, though, because you say that you could sell the building for three and a half million dollars. What did we buy it for? What did the city buy it for? It was on 2.5. 2.5? 2.5. 2.5 and they sold the building for 250 or whatever it was. Okay. So the city made a profit of 250 off that building, and then there's been a million dollars, 1.25 million dollars in depreciation. My point all along is, Ben Rich, when the city, you can say that the city taxpayers contribute more, but when the city sells this building, at some point, okay, let's just say the city sold the building tomorrow for $3.5 million. Wait, wait a minute. You, you put, you put $2.5 million up to buy the building and, and put out what you could earn on $2.5 million or what the city could do with $2.5 million as far as infrastructure and other needs of mm -hmm. the city of Hudson residents. And you've got a whole other story. I get so that, but let me at, finish my point. Let me this very narrowly. Let me finish my point. If you take a, if you if you sell the building for three and a half million dollars and you bought it for two and a half million dollars, just just use those figures. And this, the Can city going to take question? that the city going to take that million dollars and divvy it up to the joint library members. That the, that the profit was on the building? Did you, the city's not going to sell it off the market. No, but I did that. That's a question. That's what I'm saying. The library was able to buy all of it. If we were able to buy this from the city, we have a contractual agreement with the city, or we get it for 2.5 and small increases for the if, you know after the years. We don't have to buy it for 3 funded. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to the. No, let's get back to the to the discussion here. We're talking about the lease. We're talking about well, that's the lease. Discussion let's, let's, on the lease. No, no, we've gotten off and yeah, off yeah. track, way off track, and and we've got to do something this evening, and and I technically haven't heard a motion yet. I will once again repeat. I move that we, the library board, exercise the option in the current lease um, to renew it for five years. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second under discussion. And let's keep this terse. We know where we know where people are sitting. I think we know, you know. And there's there's arguments, you know, both ways. Uh, I don't think there's argu arguments at all. I think there's an easy middle of the road. I I just don't think we're sitting in a position to sign up tonight for five years. We knew this was coming at us like a freight train, and we're two weeks out. Let's let's be reasonable. I don't know if there's an option for for anything other than five years. I don't have a lease agreement with me. Right. I, I think as a board we have the option of taking back an offer of two years and ask for for something less, whether it's 130. Minus this, take off the CPI, whether it's 125, I think the city would be happy to get really close to where they're at today, and I think it gives a great opportunity for fundraising to use that as leverage rather than the other way around and say, we're forced in this building, we're going to be here regardless, you don't have to give if you don't want to. I think it's more leverage to say, hey, in a year or two years, we got another problem coming at us. And that would be a better leverage point from a fundraising perspective. So <coughs> I, that's my stance. I'm vocal. <coughs> so I, I think there's something middle of the road. I agree. There's something middle of the road. It's like it, this or it's like take it or leave it. Two weeks to go. Take it or leave it. And yeah. Uh, You're going to be right back I, uh, in the I, same I spot. Know, I don't remember the verbiage in the rental agreement. I thought it was five years. Yeah, we signed a five-year lease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I don't remember the terms of terms for renewal uh, verbiage in the lease agreement. No, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty um, there's not much there. It just says that there, option, there will, if there is 
the lease includes an option to for renewal. But what's the? But my question is, what's the city going to do if we don't do anything tonight? If the city's not going to kick us out of the building on January first. <coughs> or why don't we take something in the middle of the road to them so that we as a board right. have to have a move. I mean, the the five year thing is 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 just extending it out as far as it can go, and we're just I don't think we're ready. Yeah, it could be the terms of the agreement. I don't remember. I don't know. I think we need a long-term solid plan platform where we can move forward in one or two years we're going to be in the middle of ups and downs and incurring costs to move everybody agrees this is a beautiful building Hudson it's, it's great to be here why not just plan on staying here work on fundraising work at getting the budget tighter work at getting everything better but we need some continuity we need to show Hudson we're here and we like it here and we need to move forward and well, I agree. Karen, we showed them for five years. Yeah. And the only I thing I've seen going nowhere fast. The only thing I've seen on this board since I've been on it is more spending and not less. Uh, more spending Indian Head, more spending personnel, uh, more sp more spending more taxpayer dollars, five percent. I know I realize taxpayers haven't done anything for five years, but that was the that was the agreement. But but our 2014 budget we is remember the agreement. This is a great deal for the city to, to, to have the library in here for another five years. For those that vote yes on this, for the, I would just say this much, for those that vote yes on this lease agreement, I look forward to hearing your ideas in the next coming months on how to cut costs to make it work. And I am greatly encouraged by what I am hearing from the foundation that they're Good. going to change their philosophies and to start doing fundraising now. I okay, I voted in favor of this facility and I you know at the township level and I voted in favor of this facility at the library board based on a promise from mm -hmm. the foundation. Okay? But I have a little more faith in in who the foundation is and and the discussions that have gone on that I've heard about now then I and I had I had many many discussions and one-on-one -on -one chats and meeting at Starbucks for coffee with certain persons from from the foundation trying to explain what we were promised by Dean Knudsen when the, when this came to fruition right. and that all fell on deaf ears because uh, that you know I, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Dave is my last plea. I think we're all trying to do the right thing. I think so. Too. You and I have been down this road yeah. for, uh, for the town. Absolutely. Why are we signing up for it again? Let's pick something in the middle. I don't know if we have that latitude. I don't know if we have the ability to do that. I yeah, think we have the latitude to go back. But the mayor has said if we want, out, if we need out of the lease, he'll, they'll, we can get out of the lease. Well, if they got that kind of latitude, then they'll take another month for us to go back to them and put something else in the, in between. I'm just saying a shorter term. What I'm saying is they have a five year they have a five year lease with all sorts of latitude. Yeah. But okay. they don't well, have the latitude. Said, so going to Barb, go you want to say something? Yes, I'd like to call the question. Okay. Question. So I think that's, that's isn't it a motion to. Isn't it a motion? I don't know. Yeah, and we in the township. To to call the in the township, we call, call the question and. We call the question. Okay, you want a motion to call the question? Well, I just want to make sure that I'm doing it the right way. Is that, is that correct? Is that the right way? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and second to call the question. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Four to two? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, the question's been called. All in favor of the motion to re renew the lease for five years. Say aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. aye. Word two. Motion's carried. Other business? Board comments and items for future agendas. And believe me, I'm with you. I'm there with you. I'd love to beat Thompson up next month and find out where the hell that money is. Why they jacked that rate by 20% on us. And and looking for ways to cut the budget. I've been there for years as a year as well. I've, I've been trying for six months. Yeah, well, I've been there for five. I've been there 
how long have I been here? Seven, eight years? You've been here nine or ten. And I was on the library board before this library board right. when uh, I was on the book. That was enough. Yeah, My part is, that was another. I'm talking about credit. I'm talking about it's unsustainable. Um, no, we all know that. I will be delighted to take this news back to those who want to raise money for the center because now um, they can really want to this. Sounds good to me. I hope they come through. I hope I'm so banking on it. I am banking on it. Or, boy, I tell you. Well, I, they will need <laughs> the support. They will need the positive support of this board to be successful. Well, I think they've so got the positive give, support give, of the partners. Right, yes, 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 right. But they need to hear the positive support of this board as well. And uh, the more that they can give us in a positive manner right, right. and start moving forward. And right. There's a guy who donated $100 via the Star Observer, and I still have that letter, and, <laughs> and, and he hasn't picked up your check yet, has he? Uh -oh. He lives in He's sitting on the counter. He's in a neighborhood that lives in Cumberland. I make a hey, motion when we adjourn. Second. There is a motion and second to adjourn. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hey, that was a good one.